Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how you can enhance your reading and thinking using a knowledge graph and AI that shows you the main ideas that you can find in an article like I have here for example cultural knowledge and practice and I can see how all of those ideas inside this text are connected and what ideas they're connected to. It also allows me to see the main topics inside so that allows me to jump into the specific topics that I find interesting and see in which context they appear and most importantly I can also identify the gaps in the content and use the built-in AI to generate interesting research questions that will allow me to approach this content in a much more interesting way where I'm not just reading it and try to kind of like understand what it's about this I can do before but that allows me to sort of deconstruct the text into different topics and concepts and find how I can connect them in a completely new way and this is usually a really great way to learn something new and to memorize the text much better so if you're interested to learn how it works keep watching and I will demonstrate it step by step We'll be using an app that's called Infranodus that I developed and this here is actually an Infranodus extension that you can use in any browser including Safari on iOS and what happens here in case you don't know how Infranodus works you actually load an article here I'm on Ion website it's a really interesting website with a lot of really nice content and once I read the text or when I start reading it I usually like to open the extension here and then it visualizes the content of that page where the concepts are the nodes like here and the co-occurrences are the connections between them so that allows me to sort of uh, tangibly experience the information inside this text I can rotate it look at it from different perspectives and see what are the main ideas inside which I find is very interesting because normally we, we read chronologically and here I focus my attention on the most important ideas first that are identified using network analysis of content so if the nodes are bigger, like here, cultural knowledge, it means that this article um, has uh, those concepts inside and they're more influential than others. And then if they have the same color, it means that they belong to the same topic. So here we have a light blue one on cultural knowledge, a dark blue on transmission chains, horse movement and stone techniques. So this already gives us a really nice overview of what this article is about. I can see that it's talking about cultural knowledge. It's talking about transmission chains horse movements and stone techniques. Now we can jump a little bit deeper into this content. So for example, one thing that I can do is to ask, okay, I understand that we're talking about cultural knowledge and its transmission. I already read the article before, but what about horse movement? So there I can click on that topic and then go to the context and see in which context it's used, right? So then I can see the statements from inside the text which uh, are related to this topic. And that gives me an idea of how um, this topic is related to the content of the text so here I can see that the correct action in each situation depends on the context and how in different physical contexts uh, we have to move in a certain way and so that allows us to keep um, that movement and to pass it on through history because there are certain rules or limitations so that's a really great idea that I can retrieve using this topic here here there's another one on stone techniques I can click here on context and then I can see in which context it's used if I don't want to read through all the statements myself I can also select this topic and then click here summarize and then it's going to summarize but not the whole text but only the parts of this text that relate to stone techniques so here it's saying how researchers globally are trying to learn ancient crafting techniques like those in 16th century manuscript by Columbia making and knowing project and stone napping at the Stone Age Institute. Those efforts highlight the complexity of recreating historical practices. So here it's talking about this practice, right? And then I can jump into content and see the parts of the text which are talking about it in more detail. So for example, here I see a statement on how it's practiced for millions of years. Stone napping remains a remar remarkably difficult skill to learn. And then further, around the world, teams of researchers uh, have been trying to understand how that works and trying to see how you can actually keep this practice through just language but they find out that it's impossible that in order to keep any practice or skill alive you have to pass it through the body and actually it's the body that becomes the carrier of the practice so that's that's a really interesting idea from this text and of course I could get it if I just read this text fully it would maybe take me more time but what I like here is that I can approach this text starting from the ideas that I find interesting 
understand the main topics inside and relations between them, zoom into some specific ideas and uh, explore them in more detail and that kind of makes your interaction with the uh, knowledge uh, much more detailed and kind of thought through because instead of reading in a chronological way you're choosing the parts of the discourse um, that are more relevant to you and you're approaching the text from that perspective and also by making connections between the different ideas so for example here learning network and craft skills I can generate new ideas because I will be making connections that are not yet made in the text. So it's kind of like a more advanced way of uh, having memory cards, but in memory cards you try to remember what the text said. But here you're actually trying to generate ideas based on the gaps between them. So that's a pretty good way to use it. And you will find that you can discover a lot of really interesting information like that. Another feature that's really useful is that uh, Infernodus allows you to identify the gaps in a text. So here if I click on gaps, it shows me that, for example, we have two topics on horse movement and stone technique. And they are connected but not so well in the text, so there is a gap between them. And Infernodus proposes me to look at the connection between them. So I can actually either see the context, so the statement from one topic and another topic, and try to think of a connection myself, which I find personally more interesting. Or I can use the AI advice and generate an interesting question that would motivate me to think in the direction of connecting those two ideas. So for example here it says, how can analyzing the constraints of physical movement in traditional horse riding inform the recreation of ancient manuscript techniques for producing stone tools, leading to innovative methods that remain effective despite physical and material limitations. So kind of like, instead of analyzing the practice itself or the movement itself, we analyze the constraints and that allows us to carry that idea further. That's, that's quite an interesting question and it's very good to ask this question when you're reading the text, in fact to generate this question and then to read the text because you will be looking for something inside that will be very specific to your interests, to whatever it is that you find relevant or uh, to a gap in the text. So by reading it and thinking in this direction you will be able to develop this discourse further. So that's why it can be quite useful and interesting as well. By the way, what you can also do is if you switch uh, this off um, and you will look at the lower line here, diversity. So Infernodus also identifies how diverse the topical structure is inside the text based on the network modularity and also on how many nodes be belong to the main topics. And if it sees that there is some bias towards certain ideas, like for instance here, there's uh, too much bias on knowledge and cultural. So we kind of already know that this text is about cultural knowledge and perhaps it's not so interesting for us to kind of look at the surface. We want to look deeper. So here in front of us is providing an advice that you can develop this network further and instead of uh, focusing on the main concepts, try to focus on the less represented ones. So if you click here, it's going to select the most relevant nodes, delete them and then generate a new topical structure. So here you will see that now it's about brittle culture, physical network, crafting technique, uh, written dance, even embodied skills. It becomes much more specific and that's quite interesting because then if you summarize those more specific topics, you will get to the content that's uh, much more latent and less visible and perhaps more interesting than if you use the traditional tool. Like even if you just copied and pasted all this into ChatGPT, it would give you a generic answer and you wouldn't have to do anything with this answer. While here you're actually the one selecting the ideas that should be explored, zooming into them, exploring them in more detail and allowing yourself to kind of um, follow a certain trajectory in a very interesting way. By the way here if you selected this topic and you would just like to analyze this topic itself then you can click on this I button here. Let me just doesn't always work perfectly and then uh, it will only visualize the content of that cluster and that's great because then you can clearly see what are the ideas inside so what ideas um, it consists of and then then we can see that it's about recording something easily ancestor generation um, boxing elbow instruction so it kind of becomes much more specific about the physical practice and then if you want to get this back then you return all the nodes in the graph as usual, when you make a demonstration, things break and then everything is uh, recalculated and you can see the main topics again. So that's quite interesting and you can try 
this as well. And one other feature that you might find interesting, let's say um, you followed the advice, you removed the main nodes, then you selected the topic that you find interesting. So for example, here, written dance, you decided to look at just this topic and nothing else. And then you want to zoom in to some words inside this cluster. So for example, here, generation written record. What you can do, which I find is a really nice feature, is that you select the ideas that you find interesting here on the graph, and you can see in which context they're used uh, in the text, or you can also generate a summary that is just based on those ideas in the graph. So that's quite useful as well, because you're looking at a very specific aspect of this text, and you're asking the system to generate um, the ideas for you based on those very specific concepts. Which, which can be quite interesting because uh, in this case, when, when, when I'm focusing on written generation, survive and record, so kind of like how maybe written knowledge can survive through generations. Uh, here it's telling me how the text explores the paradox of cultural knowledge transmission, emphasizing how some practices survive despite the absence of written records, thanks to redundancy, repetition and embodiment in human action. So that's great because it gives me a really precise uh, idea from the text on how physical practices uh, survive through generations. It's due to redundancy, repetition and embodiment. And uh, it also questions the effectiveness of solely re relying on digital or written records. So that's great because it shows how important it is to keep information through the body. In fact, I want to save this idea because I have a physical practice myself that I'm working on and I can even use this idea for uh, describing why this practice is interesting. So here I'm going to click on the save button and then I will open Infranodus page and I want to show you something I really enjoy. I can save it into my Infranodus graph, but here you will see that I have 16 other statements that I made from the same website here from extension Ion Co. So from the website. So these are the clips that I made in the last uh, mainly four months ago and two days ago. So I can see that's an old Infranodus interface of the main version. I can see that I've been saving a lot of content about understanding experience and cultural experience on that website. I have a cluster on culture and transmission, on subjective influence, on personal understanding, objective reality. So there's quite a lot of really interesting content saved, but I can also see what kind of stuff I'm saving. If I click on AI insights here, it's going to summarize them for me. So. Uh, imagine these are all the different ideas that either I had myself or that were AI generated from the stuff I was reading on ION. So it's kind of like uh, it already reflects my interest. Now I can summarize them and have a very concise idea of what they're about. So for example, here it's talking about authenticity in identity politics and its intersection with lived experience and emphasizing recognizing one's authentic self and how it connects to personal feelings and objective interactions and societal structures challenging traditional dichotomies and shaping contemporary politics and cultural knowledge transmission. So that's great because it kind of gives me a summary of my interest in relation to that side, but also helps me generate new ideas from it. So it's kind of like an iterative process where I read things, save the stuff I like, generate some ideas, and then analyze them again. And then either I integrate some of the ideas into my own work or my practices, or if I'm writing a text, I can write a text about this topic and uh, I will be sure that it includes all the different connections between the different ideas I have. So that I find very useful as well. But if we come back to the extension, one really cool feature when you select the notes is that you can uh, click this play button here. And what's going to happen is that Infranodus will search the website you're on for the concepts that you selected. And it allows you to see some other content on the side re that relates to this. It actually uses Google search, which is so far the best uh, AI search engine that you can imagine. So it's pretty good because here I can see, for example, there's an article about sufferings of one generation and how they're passed to others. So that's great because it's talking about traumas and brain and body, you see. And I jump to another article on that website, which is talking about really interesting ideas. And if I click on topics and summarize, then it's gonna summarize the whole text for me. So I don't have to read the whole thing, but I already see from the graph that it's talking about the history of disease and trauma and how it's passing through generations. Also how, how epigenetic factors might influence this. And that already gives me a really good understanding of 
this topic. By the way, here uh, I have the summary so I can understand that I was right in reading the graph. It's kind of like uh, what I just said. But what I find here that's quite interesting is that it's talking about heart disease. So instead of having to read through the whole text and trying to find the stuff that I like, if I'm interested in heart disease, I can click here, click context, and then see um, it's a clinical research, social work researcher at the University of New Mexico who made a paper on carrying historical trauma and how it's an important paper. So I might want to explore this paper if I'm interested in that. And also how disease stays um, in the uh, body and in the brain. And also here I realized that uh, Brave Heart is... Uh, is a like a researcher so it's not talking about heart disease but it's rather a researcher talking about disease so that's great because it gives me um, an understanding of what it's about and then if I click further and see more statements here I can see that there's another article or part of this article which is talking about heart diseases so for example here Lakota mortality rates for heart disease are to these days almost twice the rate for the general United States population so we can see that there's something about uh, experience of Native Americans where they accumulate emotional and psychological wounding and then it, re it re results in a very specific disease. So that's quite interesting too because it allows you to jump to the content that you find interesting and see how um, it manifests itself in real life. So if you're interested to try it out, um, open an account on Infranodus and then get the extension and try it out. I also recommend you to read ION. It's a really great informational resource with a lot of really nice articles. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment to this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get informed when the new videos are out. Thank you.